Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Today I'm going to be talking about 11 signs you have a demon, uh, demonic spirits and demons. This is a concept I've been talking about the last three years. It's a field that I've been working and dealing in, helping other people. It's a field that I went through myself and uh, part of my testimony of how I came to Jesus Christ that I've talked about before. And so through my experiences, through helping people over the years and hearing different people's testimonies, there's been these signs that people needed deliverance or that, they, or that the issue was the issue of a demon, not a physical issue. There are people that think that, a, that evidence of a demon is like the exorcist when people are frantically climbing on walls or levitating off the ground. And while those situations are possible, those are extremely rare. But demonic activity is very heavy uh, as much as ever before, if not more. And you see it in the music. You see it in the emojis. People are posting that purple emoji, the demon emoji, the, the songs. People are calling themselves demons by slang. And these are even small manifestations themselves of what's in them, speaking out of them, declaring itself through them. So the number one sign that somebody has a demon, I, I, you ever feel like something is crawling on you? I remember when I was young, I would get that feeling. Or you ever see somebody that kind of like shakes and they feel like a, they thought a bug was crawling on them? This might sound super trivial, and, and, and sometimes it's actually a bug. Uh, but I've experienced and I've talked to people who are exp feeling like things are crawling on them in the night or feeling like there's a bug crawling on them. That's usually evidence that there's something moving along them or in them. You know, uh, random body aches and random pains. They might feel a, sharp, a random sharp pain. It's like, man, where did that come from? You know, just these random sharp aches and pains that kind of happen consistently, you know. Um, so when demonic spirits are in the body, they're not just in there resting. They're in there attacking, right? They're in there working on the person's mind. They're in there trying to cause sickness and disease. They're trying to destroy the person. They're trying to destroy the host. Like a parasite trying to destroy the host, right? And so... In their attempts at destruction, there's pains, there's sorenesses, there's aches, there's feelings of being crawled on in the body. There are people that have said that they, 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 their body always gets stiff and they always need a massage. Their bodies and muscles are always getting tight. And there are people that this happens to and that there are people that it doesn't. And so the root cause is often a spiritual issue. You can go to a chiropractor or a masseuse and they can deal with the physical problem. But the only issue is, is once the physical problem is dealt with, dealt with, you visit the masseuse or the chiropractor again the next month or the next week because the issues have returned again. And so I've talked about dealing with the, the, the fruit of a problem and not dealing with the root of a problem, right? If I go to a tree and I pick the leaves off the tree, there will be no sign and evidence of life on that tree or existence of life on that tree. But in another season, in another moment of time, those leaves are going to grow right back and the problems will return. And so sometimes when people are going to doctors, and, you know, or they're going to, to, to different people to try to fix their problem or taking uh, um, Tylenols and things like that for headaches, and they don't realize that the headache is actually coming from a spiritual source, not a physical one. And so they keep attacking the symptom and ignoring the root cause of the issue. And so uh, I know demon has become like a, 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 a casual word that's being used, but if we just say that there are spiritual unseen forces and powers that are on the attack, attacking people, stiffening up their muscles, causing them headaches, causing them different issues in their body. And people are oftentimes don't realize this is a spiritual root. If that person would pray and say, God, why do I keep having this issue? Why do I keep having this cough? Why do I keep having this, this headache? What's going on? Can you show me what the spiritual root is for this issue? You know, and they can be shown the spiritual root. I remember where I felt this, I felt this pit in my stomach. I had this something. I felt this deep pit in my stomach. And, and it was like this an, a, annoying attack in my belly. And, um, and, and and I didn't know where it was coming from, but there was just this uncomfort in my stomach. And I had spoke to somebody that, that was, you know, teaching me about spiritual things at that time. And they said, hey, how about we just pray that God will reveal to you what is causing that feeling in your stomach? What is causing that discomfort? And so I prayed with that person. And that same night, that same night, I had a dream of a demon appeared to me in a dream and said to me, I, I, am, I am the spirit of gluttony. And then I woke up. And, um, and so that's what that was. That's what that feeling was. It was, that, it was that, that was the particular spirit. Now, that discomfort was in my stomach for weeks, right? And I didn't know what it was. And I wasn't 
particularly overeating at that time, but it was something lingering from the past that hadn't yet come out or that was trying to come out. Um, and so I just say that there's always a spiritual root. You know, the world would like people to believe that there's just a physical root or, you know, or just a mental root. We deal with mental health, but there's spiritual roots to problems that are left unattended. So these problems keep coming back and back again because the root of the problem, the spiritual component has yet to be yanked out of the ground. So if you cut the weeds by the tip, the weeds will grow back. If you pull up the roots, the weeds are gone for good. All right. Uh, the next sign that somebody has a demon is if you ever can't control your tongue. You ever talk to somebody and they say, man, I can't stop cursing. I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I try to stop cursing that I can't, but I can't. I seen somebody in an interview recently that said, yeah, my, my friends, I mean, I, I can't control my tongue. I can't stop cursing for whatever it is. I can't stop cursing. So I tell my friends, don't bring your kids around me if you don't want them to hear cursing because I can't control it. And so what's going on with the person that they can't control the words that are coming out of their own mouth? Like that, that's an immediate testament to demon, demonization. How is it that you can't control the words that you're speaking? So what you're saying is you're not in full control over your tongue. And if you're not in full control over your tongue, then who is in control over your tongue? Like you control it partially. Some people say, I try to stop cursing. I try to control it, but I just can't stop. So if you're not in control of your tongue, who's in control of it? Somebody's in control of that tongue. A demon is a person without a body. And that person shares the body of the host and works in the body. So you're still there as the person. You're the dominant force in that body. But that demon sometimes is in there to inject something there, inject a curse there, or inject some influence there. And people, so if somebody can't stop cursing, they're in spiritual bondage because they're speaking curses out of their own mouth over themselves, right? So those curses have to arise in their own hearts first before they come out of their mouth. And so if you feel like you can't control your tongue or you can't stop cursing, I remember I used to curse just casually, right? I would just, not even a thought process, I'd say the S word and all kind of different words, just, just, it was just a part of my lingo, so I thought. And once I went through deliverance, when I got delivered of a bunch of demonic spirits, I didn't notice the first few weeks, but I realized I stopped cursing. I didn't even realize I stopped cursing, but I, after a couple of weeks, I was like, wow, I haven't said a curse in like three weeks. And I realized that I, I had been delivered of whatever spirit that was causing me to keep cursing, just casually curses would fly out of my mouth in casual conversation, right? Um, and so that's a sign of demonization. And, and there's deliverance for that. And so deliverance comes from you acknowledging that you need it and wanting it. As Derek Prince says, deliverance is for the desperate. And so if you can't stop cursing, that's a sign that there's a demon present in your life. Third and most obvious sign, I've done videos about this before, intrusive thoughts. Intrusive means it's not from you, right? For, you, you, you can't intrude on yourself. So anything that's intruding on you, anything that's being intrusive to you, that, that immediately, even in the language, there's a meaning there that there is something else pushing something on you that's not from you, Right? Uh, I, I see on posts when I see like, you know, these different posts of people that do things or short and, and the comments will say, oh, they let their intrusive thoughts win. But it's like, how do you have intrusive thoughts? So where is the intruding thought coming from if it's yours? And if it's yours, it's not intruding. It's just your thought. So the fact that a thought is intruding upon you means it's coming from another source. So any thought that feels like it's intruding, you're like, man, I, would, I wouldn't even think something like that. Where did that come from? That's not something that I would think about. I just had a, a now I, I believe the enemy can attack somebody externally with a thought for a moment. But if there's a reoccurring intrusive thought, or somebody is having a reoccurring thought that's intrusive, or a reoccurring types of thoughts, perverse thoughts that are consistent and intrusive, that's coming from an outside source. Intrusive thoughts are signs of demonization. If they're hearing blasphemous things in their mind and it's just consistent, not like they, an attack came against them for a moment, but if it's happening uh, weekly or, or, or rather consistently, that, that's a sign of demonization. That's a sign that a demon is present. The number four sign uh, that you have a demon is if irrational fears, right? For example, being afraid of the dark. I was helping somebody uh, maybe a year and a half ago who was had an irrational fear of the dark to the point where if it was nighttime in their house, they would lock themselves in the bedroom or not, I won't say lock themselves, but they would remain in their bedroom and they would be afraid to go into another room. Even though they had roommates, they would not want to go into the kitchen or go into the hallway in the dark. And, and, and there was nothing there, right? And, 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 
or perhaps there was, but there was nothing physical, physically there. But they had this irrational fear of something that didn't even have proof of existence. And I don't want to call it irrational because it's coming from a demonic spirit. They are afraid of something. There is something present making them afraid. I'm just saying it's nothing physical, right? It, it, it can't do anything. Whatever it, can do into, whatever it can do to you in the hallway or the kitchen, it can do to you in the bedroom. It's not in the hallway. It's in you. So that's the only point. And so uh, that those are rational fears, right? That that's in anything that's a fear. If somebody starts telling somebody a story, oh no no no, don't don't tell me about that. I, I don't. I want to be able to sleep tonight. I'm, you know, those are rational fears. Um, those are coming from demonic spirits. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So if you're if you're dealing with the rational fears, where are they coming from? Right? What spirit is that? If God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, there's a spiritual component to every aspect of life, guys. You have the physical component and you have the spiritual component to every aspect of life, right? So irrational fears of any kind. When you see people like, I remember I used to see like, uh, you know, those morning shows on the main channels where people would be afraid of a piece of paper or they'll have a, like these, this, just, it, it, this, this, this reasonable fear, like somebody's afraid of a spider uh, because it's poisonous and they just kind of avoid it. But then there's like extreme fear where they're running out of the house, they're extremely paranoid, they feel like they're under attack that those are irrational, right, um, to a degree. And and so even the fear of the dark is completely irrational because the dark can't do nothing to you, right? Um, that's what I'll say. The number five sign that you have a demon is if you find yourself laughing at things. You, you ever, like, somebody, you say something or somebody tells you something happened bad to somebody and you start laughing or you see something bad happen to somebody I'm not talking about somebody kind of slipped and fell and it was kind of funny. Just like you find yourself giggling or laughing at, at somebody's misfortune or, or, or even dark humor. When you start to find dark humor funny, the Bible talk tells us, warns us about coarse jesting, about making coarse or rough kinds of jokes and, 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 uh, and impolite jokes. Uh, like if you find dark humor funny or if, you're, if, you have these, if, you're, if you're the kind of person that makes dark humor jokes, or perverse, perverted jokes. There's people that make perverted jokes that are always like, uh, you know, touching their friends in inappropriate places and thinking it's funny, pretending to be uh, non-heterosexual for a joke. Things like that. Those that's demonic, right? Things like that are demonic. Or, or people that are making, you know, just perverted jokes all the time. That's demonic. Or just laughing at somebody's misfortune. You're right. You know, or, or even laughing at your own. Um, if somebody's, you know, just. Any, anytime you're laughing at something that literally is not funny, that's not a joke, right? There's things that are jokes. Yeah, somebody might have slipped and it looked, it looked a little funny. But there's things that are serious matters. If you find yourself giggling or laughing at serious matters. I, mean, I know I'd be on the phone telling somebody about demon, a, a demonization and we're having a serious conversation about their past sins. And they're like, yeah, I used to do that past sin. And they'll giggle really quick. Like that, and I'll say, what was funny? What was funny? What was funny about that? That you laughed, and they'll say, "I don't know, man. I just, I just laughed. I, I don't even, I don't even know why I laughed." All right, you, you know that's a sign of demonization, right? Laughter out of nowhere, like sudden laughter out of nowhere. All right, the number eight sign that somebody has a demon is if you ever had a random or seven sign rather, if you ever had a random impulsive desire. I was talking to this girl and she was saying, man, I don't know what happened. One day I had this dream and then the next day I just woke up with this random desire to get this tattoo. I want to get to get this tattoo of this dragon. And I don't know where it came from. Like, man, why do I even want this tattoo? But I just had this feeling to get this tattoo. And even if you had even those feelings, right? If you have a feeling to get a tattoo, like just that, just that feeling, what is it about a tattoo that you need to get, right? I'm not going to have, I did a video about tattoos before. I'm not going to do that today. But when you just have this random impulse, man, I want to go get a tattoo. I want to get this dragon. I want to get this snake. I want to get a butterfly on my hip. Or I want to get a, a, this tribal sign on my arm. Like, all, all right, for what? Why? Like, let's get to the reason why, right? And, and it's not only tattoos, it's just random impulses. Man, I want to get my tongue pierced for, it's for whatever reason. I just feel like I want to get my tongue pierced. I want to just, I'm not going to do it because I have a corporate job and, 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 and they, it, it, it doesn't fit my work environment. It's not business casual. But I just have this feeling of wanting to get my tongue pierced. Man, if I didn't work this job, I would get a tongue piercing. Like things like that, these random impulses, these random desires to do things that are just are not needed, uh, that are completely impure vanity. They don't help you or anyone else in any way. 
and most importantly, is not pleasing before the sight of God. Like those random jolts of impulses, those things are coming from spirits trying to lead you, right, to reflect them. I helped a guy one time, he was covered from, all his arms were covered with dragon scales. And when we went through deliverance, one of the spirits had said, or he had said, some, somehow it came out that the, this impression, he said, now I understand why I have these dragon scales. He, he kind of knew why he had it because he was taking on, you know, bodily, bo deforming the body and these things. He was taking on the markings and the look of the spirits that he was dealing with. You know, when you see people cutting their tongues in half and mutilating themselves, and they're, 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 even there are people now trying to look like what demons look like, right? Changing, getting surgeries, and just mutilating their bodies. These are all signs of that somebody has a demon, and they're actually trying to look like the demons that they have. Uh, the a number eight sign that somebody has a demon is, this is kind of connected, but it's not always random impulses because some people may think they're natural. It's anytime you feel a wrestle or a tug of war within yourself, right? When you just feel this wrestle, there's people that think they're wrestling with the flesh, but sometimes they're wrestling with demonic spirits. There's a, there's a fleshly wrestle, which is kind of light, and there's a demonic wrestle, which is like extreme, where, they, where like I said, it's intruding, it's impending on you, where you're like, man, the, the, the feeling to watch, and I'm going I'm to get into that next, the feeling to watch pornography or something like that, and you're like, man, I don't want to do it, and, and you're, you're saying you don't want to do it, but you hear something saying you do want to do it, that you, that you do need to do it. And, and, and there's this internal war, right? How are you at war with yourself, right? There's one you. You're not at war with yourself. You're at war with something spiritual. The Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of, and the rulers in dark places, right? In heavenly places, the rulers of darkness in heavenly places. So we know that we're at war with, with, there's a spiritual war here. Even when things are happening in the physical world, we, as spiritual people, if we're going to be Christians, we have to realize, um, this is even a revelation to me again at this moment, when things don't go right, when things kind of challenge what you're trying to do, there's a spiritual war, there's a spiritual arrangement and order happening, right? Think about Daniel when he prayed and fasted for 21 days, and, 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 and the angel said the moment he prayed, the answer was coming to him, but, but, a, but a principality in the heavens resisted that angel for 21 days, so he couldn't bring Daniel the answer to his prayer. And so sometimes there's a, and we have to pray, you know, I was woken up this morning to get up and pray, and we have to pray, and we're just praying through, we're praying through that oppression in the spirit that's causing things to happen in the physical world. Nothing is just happening in the physical world by coincidence. There's a spiritual component to it. So prayer is you tackling that spiritual component so that it's fixed in the material world, and which brings me to number nine. The number nine, somebody has a, has a demonic spirit. If you, if you consistently watch pornography, I don't, I'm not even, I don't have to spend much time on this one because I touched on it briefly. If you watch pornography, uh, meaning that if you watch pornography at, at any consistent level, once a week, once a month, once every few months, most likely you need deliverance from demonic spirits. And that's why the addiction is struggle to break because that spirit keeps rising up again, wanting to be fed with lust, right? Not just pornography, all sexual sin. If you're engaged in any sexual sin outside of marriage, then you're going to need deliverance. You're making soul ties. You're, 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 whenever you, you have that release from watching the, the, the pornography, you're opening up doors. In, in, you know, and, and, and at some point, things come through those doors you open up. And not every time, but at some point, if you persist in those behaviors, things come through those doors. So if you feel like you can't break free from watching pornography, or, or, or you know, even when people, they do it, and once they're finished doing it, they feel shameful about it, it's because it was never you that wanted to do it in the first place. You may watch something, and once you're done, you say, man, why did I even watch that? I don't even like this, because it was never you that truly liked it. There was something working through you, helping you like it, to satisfy its own lust, and that thing is a demonic spirit. So I won't spend too much more time on that one. Um, the number nine sign or, or, or 10 sign that somebody has a demonic spirit is if they're struggling with depression, frequently anxiety and anxiety attacks, suicidal thoughts, thoughts about death, worried and feeling like thinking about dying and things like that constantly. It's not that you have a, you have a moment because you went through something, but if there's a consistent pattern of anxiety, anxiety attacks, consistent pattern of depression, there are spirits that cause anxiety. There are spirits that cause depression. There are spirits that cause suicidal thoughts. There are spirits that cause thoughts of death, spirits of death, spirits of suicide, and these things like that. If, if you're struggling with these thoughts, these are spirits trying to 
push you in that direction, trying to manipulate you and dominate you to, to make like as parasites to make you take your own life or to make you, you know, uh, cause your anxiety and stress and pain and bring you down and keep you from moving forward, keep you from going in the direction that is the will of God for your life. So I, I say be very watchful of that. If you're struggling with depression or compulsive disorders or, 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 or anxiety and you need help, uh, email me at it's, it's It's on the screen as well in one of the clips. And so you can get deliverance. And if you're struggling with any of these things, you can email me if you would like to get deliverance. If you say, yeah, you know what? I think this problem is spiritual. I think it is a demon. I would like help. And you can receive help. You can be delivered. Um, so just as the last one, number 11 sign that somebody has a demon is if they're believing in a doctrine of devils. Really quick, I'm going to just put a couple out there. You guys can Google them to see if you believe any of these because the time is running a bit short. Um, but... Jesus only. That's a doc. That's a that's a that's a gospel. That's a that's a doctrine of devils. The Jesus only teaching. Uh, somebody telling you that you have to keep the dietary law. That you can't eat pork. You can't eat shrimp. You have to keep the old covenant dietary law. That's a doctrine of devils. One saved, always saved, is, is a doctrine of devils. Um, oneness. These things like that. Those are doctrine of devils. And there are they are called doctrines of devils because there are spirits that facilitate facilitate those beliefs. There are demons that are facilitating those beliefs, as the Bible tells us in the book of Timothy. And last but not least, number 12 is if you ever do something, you can't explain why you did it. If you ever say, man, I don't know why I just did that. That's a sign of, that a demon is present. But that's it, guys. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. If anybody, I, I sign up for the Patreon, guys. If you're not a Patreon member, get on my Patreon. I have over 70 new videos on Patreon. So become a Patreon member today. And if anybody wants to contribute to the channel, look in the description box. I have a link tree link so that you can do that. Thank you guys who support me. Make sure you guys hit that like button, guys. If you're still listening this far, thank you. Can you just comment down below and just say for the algorithm, or I'm still listening, or I listen to the end. Just say anything to help the video and help the algorithm and push the video to more people. That's it, guys. Glory to our God and Father and to our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you guys who are in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name.